Hello viewers, this Tao Too Fast here. If you're a do-it-yourselfer at home or even a professional and you do a lot of automotive installs, most likely you'll run into situations where you have to crimp connectors for your electrical connections. Now it's very important these connections that you make are done correctly. If they're not, you're going to have all kinds of problems with things not working properly or intermittently and worst case scenario is the wires can actually overheat resulting in a fire. So it's very important if you're crimping connectors, you're making a good solid connection. In today's video, I'll show you how to properly crimp insulated and uninsulated crimp terminals. And the key to doing this right is to use the proper crimping tool. In this video, I'll show you everything you need to know, so let's get started. When it comes to crimp terminals, there are many different styles. Some terminals are insulated, meaning there's a nylon sleeve that covers a metal connector. Then you also have uninsulated terminals. And with these, you're crimping down on bare metal. Right here are two crimp tools that I'll be using. The one on the left comes with six different dies. With this tool, you can change out the die to whichever one you need. Now the crimp tool on the right is strictly for insulated terminals. And these insulated terminals are commonly used in many automotive installs. It's important you use good quality tools for this. This will make a big difference between a good solid crimp on a connector versus one that might fail and the wire can fall out. Both of these crimpers that I'm using are made by the company iWIS. Right here is a crimper with the interchangeable die. And on this side, these are the different dies you can install onto the tool. Looking at the different dies this crimper comes with, let me go over each one so you know which one's for what. This first one here is for crimping 4 to 8 gauge large ferrule terminals. This next one here is for crimping non-insulated terminals and it's good for 20 to 8 gauge wires. This third one is for crimping insulated terminals and it's good for 22 to 10 gauge wires. This fourth one here is for crimping ferrule terminals and it's good for 24 to 10 gauge wires. This fifth one here is for crimping non-insulated open barrel terminals and you can crimp 22 to 10 gauge wires. And this last one here is for crimping non-insulated solar connectors and you can crimp 14 to 10 gauge wires. Now if you're ever confused about which die is which, pick up the die. At the end here is actually marked. So this one is marked X864. So X864 is this one right here. Also with this one on the end is marked X2546B which is this one right here. Now this crimping tool is a ratcheting tool. What I mean is that when I squeeze on this, you hear that clicking? With each click, the jaw will lock in its position. If I squeeze tighter, it'll squeeze on the connector more and more. At the very end, when you squeeze all the way, it will release automatically. Now to remove the die, what you want to do is open this up and then grab onto this die, this top one here, and just pull this out. Same thing for the bottom one. Just grab onto it and this will come out. And to install another one, all you have to do is grab another die, push this in, here's the top one, now this is installed. As you can see, this system is very easy to use. So here I'm going to show you how to crimp this non-insulated spade connector. There's a female side. And the corresponding die that I'll be using is this one here. This wire I have here is a 16 gauge wire. And what you want to do is strip back the insulation up to this point right here because this connector actually has two parts to it. The inside part will crimp down on the bare wire and this outside part will crimp down on the insulated part of the wire. And this acts as a strain relief after the wire is crimped. Again, I'm going to strip the wire up to this point. Using the included wire stripper, it's marked 16 gauge right here. I'll place a wire in the wire stripper right here and then pull back on the insulation. If you place a wire in the terminal, this is what it should look like. I removed this die to show you this die actually has two parts. On this side it has a wider opening and on the other side it has a more narrow opening. So when you're placing this connector into a die like this, you'll crimp both wings in one single action. Now with the two tabs on the connector, you squeeze it in a little bit and then what you want to do is place this end where it will crimp down on the insulated part of the wire into the bigger opening of the die. And in this case, I'm going to put it into this one right here. And remember, this is a ratcheting crimper, so it will lock it in place. I'm going to place the wire into the terminal. Now squeeze down on the crimper. 
squeeze it all the way and then it'll release and right here is the completed crimp here's a closer look at this terminal now besides crimping these type of spade connectors if you have any type of connector like this that you use for fog lights or other automotive accessories the connector that goes into these connectors have the same type of crimp so like what I just showed you, you can use the same method to crimp this type of connector. Now as a comparison, let me show you this cheaper crimper that I have here on the left. As you can see, if you look at the die itself, well for one, this is not an interchangeable die. And secondly, there's only one size of crimping throughout the length of it. So it's not able to provide a separate crimp for the wire itself and the insulated part of the wire. Here's another crimper that many of you have seen. And right here, you can crimp insulated connectors. And right here is for crimping non-insulated connectors. If I open this up, you see the crimper itself is very narrow. For the insulated side, because this die is very narrow, you're only able to crimp a small part of that connector. And this can lead to a very high chance of the wire falling out. And right here is the crimper for insulated terminals. And this tool also comes with an assortment of insulated terminals. There are 285 pieces of insulated connectors here. So right here you have female and male spade connectors, ring terminals. The red one is for 22 to 16 gauge wires. The blue one is for 16 to 14 gauge wires. And the yellow one is for 12 to 10 gauge wires. Right here I have a piece of 18 gauge wire. And with this wire you'll be using one of the red connectors because this red one here will accommodate 22 to 16 gauge wires. So here I have a ring terminal, butt connector, a female spade connector, and this top pin is a male spade connector. So let me show you how to crimp this connector on. Besides using this type of wire stripper, my go-to wire stripper is this type. It's fast and easy. All you have to do is put the wire on the correct gauge hole, and then all you have to do is squeeze it, and it'll strip the insulation. Now when I crimp these type of insulated connectors, I like to give the wire a little twist, just so the wire strands doesn't fray out. Now with this ratcheting mechanism, if you want to release it midway, there's a little lever right here. Push on this lever and it'll release it. Next I'll place a connector into the die like this. Squeeze down on it. Now I can insert this wire into this opening. And here's a look on the other side. Now you squeeze down the handle. And then release it. And here is the crimped connector. And there's a very solid connection. Now I want to give you a close up look of this crimp. You see right here there is a small dot. And this dot actually comes from the die of this crimper itself. With the red die there's one dot, the blue die has two dots, and the yellow die has three dots. This is what they call a die code engraving, and the purpose of it is to verify which die you used to crimp this connector. So for those of you who like to do automotive installs, and you've always wondered what's the proper way of crimping crimp connectors, I hope you found this video to be helpful. So whether you have insulated or non-insulated terminals, now you know how to crimp these terminals properly. If you want to pick up these two crimp tools from iWIS, check out the links below. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video. To support this channel, remember to click on thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell so you get notified of new videos.